Hey you guys, my name is Justin and welcome to Corpse Factory. This is a game I played the demo for about six months ago, so I'm excited to see it finally releasing fully. And it was only 20 bucks, or actually less than 20 bucks, because I got the launch discount and it was an extra 10% off. So a lot less than I was expecting, so I'm already happy about that going into it, you know? I'll always take a game for cheap, but uh, for the amount of quality I think that this game's gonna have, I think that's a steal, honestly. Like. They just added voice acting, and they've added new music tracks and things like that since I played the demo, so it's already going to be way better, in my opinion. Uh, I, I like a good voice acting game, that means I have to talk less. But uh, apparently there's some a few new features in here. We got endings now. Uh, we got Crow Factory, I have no idea what that is. Um, but I'm looking forward to finding out. And I'm going to be playing through the whole game, so that'll be fun. I really like the premise, it was this website where you could request the death of somebody and quite a bit happened in the demo the demo was pretty packed full of content so i can only imagine the full game will have a lot more but let's go ahead and uh start a new game prologue emmy katsuno okay Okay, we're starting off very similar to the demo, but I can tell, like, they've made this whole UI look way better. Like, there actually is, like, a decent UI now. <laughs> I know those bitches have been talking about me behind my back. I don't usually swear, but I'll say it just that once, because it's the opening, okay? Y'all know me, I don't like to swear too much. Uh, they flash those fake smiles when I walk past. They wave half-heartedly and say things like, Oh, hi, Emmy, or you're the only one brave enough to pull off that look. Well, a little passive-aggressive, don't you think? They're all two-faced lying buttholes. I hate each and every one of them. Amano, Sachiko, Kurosawa. Just look at them. Everything about them is fake. Fake lips, fake nails, fake smiles, fake personalities. Look, I'll be the first to admit I'm a fake biatch too, but even I know I'm not as bad as them. I'm not horrible to every person I meet, just the ones I don't like. I get the feeling she doesn't like a lot of people, but I'm, I'm just gonna throw that out there. How was I supposed to know these delinquents would obsess over tormenting me? Amano is unbearable, but probably the least terrible of the three. She's a year younger than me and acts like she's some famous pop idol. But she's a dropout just like me, working in this dead-end part-time job just so her parents don't kick her out of their house. She spends her evenings singing at underground bars and hanging out with shady talent agents who swear they can promote her and make her the next big pop star. I've heard Japan has a pretty big, uh, like, adult film industry. I don't know if this is actually supposed to take place in Japan, but I'm assuming so. Um, I, I've heard, like, people will, like, recruit you that are, like, talent agents, but they're recruiting you, like I said, for, uh, the adult film. She gets taken advantage of time and time again, but never seems to learn her lesson. I don't know if she's just stupid or if she really thinks she's on the right track to becoming a famous idol. Who knows? You know, she's pursuing her dream. Good for her. Sachiko is the kind of straight-laced girl. I wonder why girl is purple here. You see at every school studying her butt off to earn her parents' approval. The type of girl that always has the best grades but never really has any friends. I don't know. She always looks like she she's drank way too much coffee. She's the kind of girl that graduates, then the reality of the world knocks her on her butt, and she realizes she actually has no clue what she's doing, just like the rest of us. Yeah, that's true. My wife and I were having a discussion about that tonight. I'm like, yeah, not doing what I thought I was going to be doing at 25 years old, but hey, who is, right? So she settles for the first crappy job she can find, and then suddenly it's three years later, and she's still slaving away for some butthole managers just to make ends meet. Instead of being humbled by her station in life, Sachiko decides to take her anger out on everyone around her. I've seen her slap customers out of frustration. Yeah, you can't, you can't do that. <laughs> uh, working at a, a job, you freaking, how has she not gotten fired? Rumor has it she strangled our boss. She strangled the boss. She still has a job here. He's too afraid to fire her now. I don't blame him. Uh, get the police involved. <sighs> you know, let's, let's just keep reading. And then there's Kurosawa. I could write an entire blog on all the things I hate about her. Wow, okay. She's pretty, but she's very aware of it. She seems to have a new sugar daddy every few weeks. Some poor old fool that she strings along and milks dry. She must be nearing 30, but all of her friends are still in senior high school. It's more than a little weird. 
Uh, yeah, that is a little weird. That's like a 10 year gap. They hang around the train station, blowing homeless people and shopping from the convenience store. Um, wow, okay. I, I guess some people really don't have their lives together. At least I don't do that. I'm pretty certain that she's done time once or twice. I would hope so. It sounds like freaking these two over on the right side of the screen need to both do some time. Kurosawa is just an all-around terrible person. She makes Amano and Sachiko look like saints in comparison. I don't know. I think boss, like choking your boss, might be a little bit more up there, but I'm not sure about that. We can just say that they're both bad. Honestly, I couldn't ask for a worse group of coworkers. Finally, there's me. Emi Katsuno, university dropout, part-time cashier, and up to my ears in debt. I live in a small apartment in a bad neighborhood just to keep my head above water. Uh, I wonder if they're going to show her sprite. They they didn't immediately show it. Uh, my apartment building is filled with deadbeats, loan sharks, junkies, perverts, you name it. I'm wondering why they're coloring certain words. If that, does that have relevance? By some miracle, I managed to snap up the best apartment in the worst building. Although the place is nice, the rent is questionably low. I'm fully expecting the landlord to wander in one day and demand more money. Or murder me. Wow. Okay, that's... Those are two very different things. But sure. Sure. Constantly worried about money. Worried about my safety. Worried about what the hell I'm supposed to be doing with my life. Freaking, I ask myself that all the time. And if that wasn't bad enough, I have to work four days a week with the three worst girls I've ever met in my life. Today is no different from any other day. Mono greets me at the door, her disgusting, disgustingly puffy and pouty lips pulled back in a half-snarl, half-smile. I can smell the sickly sweet scent of too much lip gloss from ten feet oh, away. Oh, hi, Emmy. You're late again, you know. Ooh, the voice acting. Let's go. This was not in the demo when I played it. <laughs> uh, it's a good day when you... The first thing you think of when someone greets you is just calling them a bitch. <laughs> Yeah, sorry. Just let me past. I'll go clock in. Ooh, and she has voice acting too. Cool, cool. I was wondering, because, like, we've been just getting narration so far. Okay, they did keep her sprite relatively the same, too. Whatever. Kurosawa wants to see you. Can you, like, just go see her? I'm so glad she talks like this, too, because usually when I voice a character like this, that's the kind of voice I'd give them. Like, uh, can you just, like, go see her? And I say that exactly like that, so she's she talks like it. I'm so happy. Fine. Amano walks off. I look around for Kurosawa. The stale scent of cigarette smoke eventually overwhelms the lingering scent of lip gloss in there and leads me to her location. You wanted me? Katsuno, I need you to process a big refund. Don't mess it up, okay? It's for a regular customer. Oh gosh, I remember I hated this chick too. Like, she's justified in the way she feels. Uh... Okay, I can do that. What am I refunding? There's a bunch of shirts on the counter. Just ring them up and refund them for cash. You can leave the money in the envelope under the register. Nope, don't Fine. do that. I'll take care of it. Thanks. I'm going for a smoke break. I decided to clock in before processing the refund. I won't be paid for the shift if the company doesn't know I came into work. I don't know, you'll regret doing that, let me tell you. I go behind the counter and retrieve the sign and booklet. I flip to today's date and fill in my details. Done and done. The shirts that Kurosawa mentioned are lying haphazardly over the counter. I pick them up and scan each one. They're not cheap. The first rings up at 11,000, the next is 13,000. Yeah, I'm assuming these are in yen. There are six shirts all up. Each one is a little more expensive than the last. They don't look worn and the tags are intact. I'm supposed to ask for a receipt or proof of purchase before making a refund, but the customer is obviously not here. Besides, the request came directly from Kurosawa, my superior, so I can't exactly refuse. Mm, you could, but yeah, this seems like a small business type thing, so I doubt you can. The refund goes to assistance successfully and the cash drawer opens up. I count out the correct amount of money in 10,000 yen bills. Okay, so yes, it is yen. Then pop an elastic band around the cash and put it in an envelope. I also print a copy of the refund receipt and slip it in with the cash. Gosh, there's, there's another highlighted word. Like, what are these supposed to be used for? I mean, I'm sure I'll find out. Or maybe they're just emphasizing it. I have no idea. Job done. I slide the envelope back into the register and lean against the counter. Surveying the store, I can see that there aren't any customers around. It's still early in the morning, after all. We don't usually get much business until around lunchtime. I hover around the register for a while, biting my nails and staring at the clock to pass time. 
Kurosawa eventually returns from a smoke break. Half an hour must have passed by now. Who does she think she is? Uh, the manager. Or at least, like, supervisor. You finished that refund? Yeah. I did it just like you said. Okay. She rummages around underneath the cash register and pulls out the envelope stuffed with cash. Her fingers flick through it quickly, counting each note, and she nods as though satisfied. Work, Katsuno. I'll pass this on to the customer next time they come in. No problem. Anyway, I'll take over the cash register for a while. You wanna go tidy up stock? Yeah, okay. Not too bothered if Kurosawa wants to take over register duties. It's boring standing around. I'd much rather be doing something than nothing. Yeah, I was the same way at work. I'd rather, like, keep my hands busy. As I head towards a rack of untidy jackets, Sachiko bumps into me. Sorry, I didn't see you there. Oh yeah, I'm sure you didn't. She actually just apologized to someone. Sachiko, the customer abuser. <sighs> That's fine. You okay? I haven't been sleeping real well. I'm just tired, that's all. Really? I couldn't tell. Like, you have these really thickly drawn bags under your eyes. Well, <laughs> it's like, um, get some rest, I guess. Rick and I probably have bags, too, I bet. Yeah, I do. Look, while I've got you here, I know I haven't really been easy to get along with lately. I've got my own personal issues, but that's no reason to take it out on you and the other girls. Can't believe what I'm hearing. Sachiko had a change of heart. I don't believe it. So I'm resigning as of today. I don't deserve this job. I wanted to apologize and make sure there's no bad blood between us. Sachiko, I don't know what to say. I never expected this from you i gotta say like the voice acting is not <clears throat> excuse me the voice acting is not like the best i've ever heard but it's really good and like i really like it it's so much better than it was before because it was just you just read through the whole thing and there was like not much life to it you know like this brings so much life to it now yeah if you're resigning do you have another job lined up and like I said, for $20? Like, voice acting in a visual novel? I don't know how long this novel is, but... No, not yet, but I... I think that's pretty crazy to me. ...to work on myself first. I have a lot to think about. Uh, yeah, from what we've, we've heard about you, it does sound like you have a lot to work on. Well, I mean, as long as you're sure about this. I am. In that case, then thank you for apologizing. I forgive you. Thank you, Emmy. Well, until next time, then. Yeah. Until next time. Gosh, the way they try to end this conversation makes it sound like the next time we're going to see her, she's going to be, like, on the news, and they found her in a ditch somewhere. Or in a, in a garbage can or something. Sachiko takes her leave. I'm still a bit taken back by her sudden personality change. Did I misjudge her from the start? Uh, I'm not too sure about that. No, that can't be it. She has a history of abusing customers and coworkers. No, no way I imagined all that. Yeah, that's not something that just goes away, I hate to tell you. Like, that would take a lot of, like, therapy and working on things, and... For most people, probably wouldn't happen. Regardless, I'm actually kind of glad that she's trying to get a grip on her life. I hope everything works out for her. If she's resigning today, then I suppose the only two terrible coworkers left are Amano and Kurosawa. Isn't that, like, essentially everybody who works here, then? <laughs> I glance at Amano, who is standing by the door, waiting to greet customers. She has a vacant expression on her face, like always. I then look towards the register where Kurosawa should have been standing, but she's not there. Didn't she offer to take over register duties from me? Where the hell did she disappear to? I wander behind the counter. The register doesn't look like it's been touched. Out of curiosity, I slide my hand around the register, and the cash-stuffed envelope is gone. No sign of it. Yep, she's screwing us over. The receipt from the refund is lying on the floor. I bend down and pick it up. It's a standard refund receipt, stating the value of the transaction. My name is signed at the bottom since I was the one who processed it. The refunded money is gone, and so is Kurosawa. Did she... Nah, she couldn't have. Surely she wouldn't have run off with the money. No one would be stupid enough to risk their job over that, would they? Ah, there's Katsuno. You should go ask her about it. Ah, oh, yes. I remember this from the demo. <laughs> Ruin us over. Kurosawa's still here. She seemed to pop up from nowhere. Katsuno, a word, if you please. Sure thing. 
Ah, Hirota, the manager of the store. He normally spends his time in the office out back, so it's kind of unusual to see him here. What could he want Hirosawa with me? Hirosawa was tending to the register when she noticed the system flagged a large refund as suspicious. Do you know anything about it? Well, yeah. I processed a big refund this morning. Is that so? Do you have the receipt? Uh, here. I hand him the transaction receipt while it's still between my fingers. He looks over once and twice, his eyebrows furrowing. This is quite a large refund. No wonder the system flagged it. Did you get approval from Kurosawa before processing this? Kurosawa was the one who asked me to process it, sir. I never even spoke to the customer that it was intended for. That's not true, Hirota. I don't know anything about this refund. Wait, what? There it is. Where is the refunded money now? Well, I put it in an envelope underneath the register, but... There's no money here, sir. She's lying to you. The caucasity of this woman. Interesting. No money to be found. And Katsuno, you're the one who signed off on the refund. That makes you responsible. Yeah, I did sign it, but... You're going to have to tell the truth, Katsuno. Did you take the money? Don't make me get the police involved. Y'all, this is what security cameras are for. This is why you can have recorded evidence and you wouldn't get away with this crap. Kurosawa asked me to process the refund and leave the cash in an envelope. Yeah, because you think about it, it's like, yeah, security cameras are for catching people that might be stealing, but they'll probably have already left the store by the time you notice, right? But no, it's it's for the employees to make sure they're not, like, cheating the company out of money, too. It's nonsense. That's simply irresponsible. It's not safe to leave cash out of the register. But... I feel my stomach beginning to sink. What exactly is happening here? Confess at once, Katsuno. I didn't steal the damn money! If anyone stole it, it was that bitch Kurosawa! <laughs> Enough! We're not going to stand here and argue about this like bickering school children. Sajiko! Ah. Uh, this woman. Like a serpent slinking out of the shadow, Sachiko slides behind, beside Hirota. Yeah, Sirita? Did you witness Katsuno take an envelope of cash from the register? Oh, yes, sir. Just this morning. She acted like she was processing a refund, then pocketed the cash. I meant to bring it to your attention sooner, but... Well, part of this is your own fault for working here. If you knew everyone here was untrustworthy, you are only bound to get screwed later, sooner or later, right? <laughs> she hasn't changed at all. She just sold me out. I wouldn't even say she sold you out. You didn't do anything wrong. More like she screwed you over. I managed to catch a glimpse of Kurosawa smirking at Sachiko. They nod in unison and giggle. Are they in this together? Are they throwing me under the bus just so they can steal some cash? Yeah. I, I, I think that's what they're doing. I can't believe it. I'm so freaking angry. There you have it. A witness to your crime. Kurosawa, if you would kindly call the police. Yes, sir. Wait just a minute! Scream louder than intended, but my blood is boiling. I can barely control myself. Steal any money. Why don't you check the security cameras, huh? You'll see that I'm innocent. Oh, you know those cameras haven't worked in months, right? I suppose nowadays they're mostly just for show. Wow. So that's your own guys' fault. Of course. If Hirota really wants me to, I could go double check it just to be sure. Though, I think that would just be a waste of time. Yeah, she'd probably just tamper with it anyways. Thank you, but that won't be necessary, Kurosawa. Kurosawa's eyes narrow. She glares at me wickedly. Amano, please show everybody what you found. You got it, boss. And the the evidence was planted, right? I didn't even realize Amano was part of this discussion. She is leering at me disgustingly and slapping an envelope against her open found palm. Found this wad of cash in Katsuno's locker out back. Hmm. It's almost like this is a setup, huh? I can feel the blood drain from my face. I haven't even been out back today. Are they all, the, all, all in this against me? Did they plant evidence to get me in trouble? You're lying! I haven't even had time to go out back today! I mean, what do you want me to say? You think the cash just appeared out of nowhere? It would seem all the evidence is against you, Katsuno. Gosh, worst boss Since ever. Since located the money, I won't have you arrested. 
but you will not step foot in this store ever again. Do I make myself clear? I mean, honestly, she's getting off pretty good. Like, I, frickin', I wouldn't want to step in the store again anyways. You're fired. And I will make sure you never work in any of our stores again. Speechless. I can't even process my thoughts. I guess it's not too much of a small business if they have multiple stores, but... The quiet giggling and snickering of Kurosawa, Sachiko, and Amano buzzes in my ears until my skull feels like it's gonna burst. Hirota grabs my shoulder and tries to lead me outside, but I jerk away and stumble backward. My back slams to the glass window in front of the store. Thankfully, the glass isn't shattered, but I can immediately feel a bruise forming. Ugh. I push myself forward, regain my balance, and duck towards the sliding door. See you around, Emmy. <gasps> oh well, I guess not, hey? <laughs> I mean, this is literally just uh, helping you out. Like, you obviously needed to get out of this job. Uh, but, I don't know, she probably needs the money, so it might be screwing her over, too, at the same time. I blink tears out of my eyes as I dash through the store's front door. My anger and fear and anxiety get the better of me, and it's a good five or ten minutes before I realize that I've been running aimlessly through the shopping mall. I reach a hand to my eyes to wipe away the moisture and take a deep breath. I look around trying to get my bearings. The escalators, at least I know where I am. I need to sit down and compose myself. If I don't calm down, I might be tempted to return to the store and start punching those three absolute buttholes. I feel so weird saying buttholes, though. I don't know. I try not, like I said, try not to swear too much. But uh, this game apparently has a few swear words. With my head down, I blindly charge towards a small seating area. I collide head first with somebody in front of me without thinking I scream out in anger. Watch where you're going. Oh, sorry. Wait, this girl. I know her from somewhere. Katsuna? Is that you? It's the childhood friend. Uh, I know you. Have we met? Did we go to elementary school together? Yes, of course. We graduated oh, high school. from senior high school together. Remember? Did we? Like I said, I've played through some of this, but I, it might be slightly different, and also I just don't remember. And it's only, like, the first little bit of the game that, like, after this, I'm not going to know what's going to happen. That's why it's exciting. Senior high school was more than a year ago. Feels like a different lifetime. How does she expect me to remember that? Gosh. I remember elementary school kind of well. Anything yeah. after that, though. Maybe. Yeah, you're Sato, right? Aoi Sato? Aoi Sato. Me. You do remember. Well, kinda. Sorry. I've had a crappy day. I just got fired, so I'm not thinking straight. You got fired? I'm really sorry. Um, you bumped into me pretty hard. Are you hurt? I'm fine. Yeah, you know, we're we're good. You know, after maybe a, like a relaxing bath or something. We'll we'll be chilling. Aoi is rubbing her arm tenderly. I figure I must have injured her, but I'm not really in the mood to stand here and apologize to some old acquaintance. I have to go. Excuse me. Doesn't elaborate. Leaves. Oh. <laughs> I push past Aoi. Ex unexpectedly, the shy and spineless girl grabs my arm and stops me from leaving. Her grip is surprisingly strong. So now, you said that you just got fired. Is that true? Yeah, but I would imagine she doesn't want you pushing her on it. But, yeah, I'm pissed off about it. Tell me what happened. Why are you so interested? I just thought maybe I could help us all. Yeah, I feel like she's just trying to be a good friend. Even though we're not really friends, I guess. Whatever. You can't help. Some bitch set me up. She stole a bunch of money and made me take the fall. Uh, I see. Are we done here? Can I leave now? Sorry for keeping you. Yeah, okay. Once again, I turn to leave, but Aoi's next words managed to catch my interest. You know, if someone got you fired... There is a way you could get revenge. Oh boy. Nope. Don't tell her this. Don't do it. <laughs> what is this girl talking about? Does she have some way for me to get back at Kurosawa? What am I thinking? I can't even step foot back in the store. My chance to get any kind of justice doesn't exist. Revenge? What the hell are you talking about? Never mind. I shouldn't have said anything. Oh, hell no. You're not going cold on me now. Tell me what you meant. Oh, okay. But... Yep. <laughs> Let's talk quietly. Just gonna tell you about this shady website. Nothing big. There may be a way for you to get back at whoever got you fired. <sighs> yeah, like, what they did was terrible, right? But... Have you heard the rumors of Corpse Girl's website? Yeah, I don't know about killing somebody to get back at them. Is that really necessary? Corpse Girl? Who is that? Jeez, 
Sounds like some death metal band. I know, it does. Aoi ignores my comment and continues on with her speech. They say that if you visit Corpse Girl's website, you can request a death. Request a death? What is this girl ranting about? Hang on, start over. I'm I'm completely lost. Aoi frowns a look of annoyance on her face. If somebody wrongs you and you want to get revenge on them. Go on. Rumors state that you can visit Corpse Girl's website and fill out a form in order to request a specific person's death. This Corpse Girl, is she, like, a hitman or something? No one knows the truth. All I know is that her victims always receive a photo of their own corpse before they die. Yeah, uh huh, nothing crazy about that, nothing... You know, nothing weird. It just seems like normal everyday stuff. Of course, like, we got plenty of websites like that. You know, this doesn't sound like something we should totally not get involved with or anything. How is that possible? That's a good question. I don't know. I, I've been wanting to use the website for some time. There's somebody, somebody that I'd be happier without. But I'm not brave enough to go through with it. Still, I want to know if the rumors are true. If you use the website, you could tell me if it works or not. This whole thing sounds sketchy. Yeah. Risky. I agree. Are the police gonna come get me if I go on this website? I... I've got no idea. I mean, let's think about it from the standpoint of the law. If, if, if you tell this person to go murder somebody and they go do it, are you not an accomplice? I feel like you are. I don't know if y'all remember, there was that case where that girl bullied this guy into committing suicide, and she got charged. Uh, I don't remember exactly what the charge was, but she essentially got held accountable for it, as if, like, she was the one who killed him. So I can only imagine this would fit somewhere in that realm. Well, thanks, I guess. Aoi doesn't make a further attempt to stop me when I turn my heel and walk away. I don't know what to make of her suggestion. Can such a website even exist? The ability to request a death just sounds so unbelievable. And yet... I find myself unable to get the possibilities out of my head as I make my way towards the train station. Corpse Girl, a website tailored for revenge. I could daub in Kurosawa, Sachiko, Amano. If I could remain anonymous, then no matter what happens, whatever fate befalls these girls, it couldn't be traced back to me. Oh boy. You know what the start of this game reminds me of? It reminds me of Death Note, where, like, you know, he wants to, like, test it out. He wants to see if the notebook works. And uh, that curiosity just leads down to evil paths. It just it just keeps going from there. Once you kill the first person, you're just going to want to keep doing it. I start to wonder affording the deaths of a few girls simply because they got me fired is a little extreme. I would say it is. But, you know... You do you. This is a visual novel. Let's see what happens, right? Although they're not exactly saints. They're closer to human garbage more than anything else. They've always been hostile towards me. I'd probably be doing the world a favor if I had them all killed. You know, <clears throat> Light Yagami thought the same thing, right? And you can see where that went. He started killing anybody who got in his way, whether they were guilty or innocent or just a bystander. If they screwed me over without a second thought, who knows what they might have to do to their next unsuspecting victim. Yeah, killing all three of them is the right thing to do. Wow, she really came to that conclusion quickly. Removing them from the planet will prevent them from hurting anyone else. My heart begins to race. Not a good idea. A trip back to my apartment is boring. The train carriage is nearly empty, save for a few junior high school boys and a couple of women in business attire. I have a few seats all to myself, so I sprawl out and check my phone for messages. When I feel confident that no one in the carriage is watching me, I decide to search for Corpse Girl's website on my phone. I don't know exactly how easy it will be to find, maybe I should have asked Aoi for the address. Well, a quick search shouldn't be too hard, I begin to type. A few results pop up on my screen, but none seem relevant. There are links to funeral services and anime fan sites, but nothing really matches what I'm looking for. Maybe this was a bad idea. I should probably delete my search history. Yeah, the government knows now. You're screwed. Maybe just one more search. Okay, sure, why not? Request uh, death. 
My phone seems to lag for a few seconds when the search is submitted. A fresh list of links appears. The top results catches my eye immediately. This must be it. I feel like this is like the point in the novel where you're like, frick, this is where everything is about to go downhill. Like if you thought everything before this was bad, you know, they're screwing over at work, right? This is where some bad stuff's gonna happen. Click the link and the website loads immediately. Oh, hey, at least a little uh, girl, you know, the, she's a cheerleader. She's cute, right? Like, nothing bad about this site. Yeah, it looks nice. Very friendly. The website's simple. There's a freaky little girl dancing at the top of the screen and looks too happy to belong on such a site. The whole site is really basic. A small blurb of text offers instructions. To death. Fill out your victim's information and upload a photo of them. Your victim will receive a photo of their own corpse shortly before they die. Watch out. Don't be an idiot and enter your own information, or you will be cursed. What the hell? I'm like, can't they have a warning? They're like, hey, don't be an idiot. Because some people out there would probably do that. They're like, oh, I gotta put my information first before I put in theirs, right? Is this site actually for real? I'm starting to wonder if I should go through with this. There's very little useful information on this site. I mean, it does say request death, but come on. Is someone actually gonna go out and kill the person they choose? I don't know. Let's find out. How on earth can someone receive a photo of their own corpse before they're actually dead? That just doesn't make any sense. I mean, you could just use, like, a stunt double. Like, just make it out of, like, a mannequin or something. My heart suddenly skips a beat and I nearly drop my phone when it buzzes at me. Oh, thank God. It's just a text message. Yeah, it's gonna be the NSA. Like, we're watching you. Or the equivalent in Japan. I don't know what Japan has. It's like the NSA. I'm sure somebody's spying on Japanese people. Of course there is. Every government spies on their people. An unknown number, that's never a good thing. Wait a minute, there's a photo attachment. Who would be sending me a photo from an unknown number? My curiosity gets the better of me and I open the message. Oh, okay, good. I thought it was gonna be a photo of her. <laughs> from Asalia. <laughs> She's just flashing the money. I knew it too, she set me up and Amano and Sachika were in on it too. They made me process a fake refund to get the cash out of the register so that my name would be on the transaction. And all for what? A bit of cash they'd have to split three ways. How did they keep the cash? If they found the envelope, wouldn't they have put it back? Maybe they just screwed him out of it. I don't know. Kurosawa, I'll kill you! I'll kill you! You have the junior high school boys nearby. <laughs> They'll get me with worried expressions, but I don't give a darn. <laughs> They're just like, uh, this lady over here keeps saying I'll kill you. <laughs> I'm angry. I'm furious. Kurosawa is going to pay. I close Kurosawa's message and return to Corpse Girl's website. It's clear what has to be done. I'm going to request Kurosawa's death. I read the website's instructions one more time to make sure I haven't missed anything important. Enter the victim's phone number. Upload a photo of the victim. <laughs> Honestly, I feel like she had to have been a little crazy before like she found out about this website because who laughs like that? I mean, it, she she made up her mind pretty quick too about killing her. I don't know if y'all noticed. She was it, she fought through it very quickly. It was a matter of like 30 seconds. She was like, okay, ah, I probably shouldn't kill him over, you know, just getting me fired. And then she's like, nah, freaking let's kill him. <laughs> it's like, okay, a little crazy much. Can't believe it. Kurosawa just signed her own death sentence. She sent me a photo of herself, and her phone number was included with the message. How convenient. I fill in the phone number and upload the photo, my hands trembling the whole time. My thumb hovers over the, the submit button. I feel a chill down my spine. My face turns pale, and I immediately feel cold and clammy. Is Kurosawa really going to die if I use this website, or is this all a sick hoax? Who knows? Uh, we'll find out. I run through the possible outcomes in my head. First possibility, nothing happens and Kurosawa is none the wiser. Second possibility, Kurosawa gets pranked by whoever is running the website. Maybe the administrator gets a kick from tormenting people. Kurosawa might just receive some fan text or something like that. Third possibility, Kurosawa dies. She gets murdered or some elaborate scheme is concocted to make her die accidentally. Uh. Okay. Uh, yeah, it does sound like you are a little crazy too there, lady. <laughs> And the evil laughing does not help. <laughs> this reminds me of freaking light. <laughs> I slam my thumb 
thumb down and smash the submit button. Prepare for the end, Kurosawa. I like how there's no mention of option um, four, which is you get arrested for trying to get someone killed. June 12th, Friday evening. When I get home, I can barely contain my nervousness. I'm shaking as I open the door to my apartment. By the time I walk through the door, the sun has just started to set behind the backdrop of the city. Even though it's not dark yet, I'm feeling physically and mentally drained. The drama at work this morning, the taunting laugh of Kurosawa, I feel exhausted, exhausted like I just want to crawl into my bed and sleep. Despite my dripping energy, or dipping energy levels, I can't extinguish the burning question flickering within my mind like a candle flame. How will I know when or if Kurosawa is dead? Will Corpse Girl's website notify me? No, of course not. I didn't give any of my personal information to the site. The entire thing was anonymous. It's the internet. Nothing's anonymous, guys. And it's not like I can visit the store tomorrow and see if she comes into work. I'll be kicked out as soon as I show my face. So what do I do? <sighs> That's it. I whip my phone out of my purse and open Noise, a social network app that all my coworkers are connected to. Kurosawa, Sachiko, Amano, and I are all in this group chat labeled Work Life. We use the chat to, to swap shifts with each other and complain about the boss. <sighs> Won't have to do that anymore. Just as I was hoping I hadn't been kicked out from the group yet. I swipe through the list of chat members to tap on Kurosawa's profile. Last online one hour ago. Perfect. If I use this app, I can keep an eye if Kurosawa is active. She only has to be using her phone for noise to detect that she's online. She doesn't necessarily have to be using noise itself. It's the best way I can think of the monitor if she's alive or not. It will do for now, at least. I wonder why Kurosawa sent me that photo of herself via regular text messages instead of through noise. Maybe she thought she could be busted for someone if someone got into her noise profile. I mean, they could just get into her phone just as easily. Who knows what that girl was thinking? Regardless, I'm thankful she made such a stupid mistake. I wouldn't have obtained her phone number if she had decided to message me through noise instead. After all, noise is strictly an online service. No need for phone numbers. Come to think of it, where did she get my phone number from? Well, no matter, it worked out for me in the end. I slumped down on the couch in front of the TV and keep my phone firmly gripped in one hand, my knuckles whitening. I start to bite the fingernails on my other hand out of anxiety. In an attempt to distract myself, I switch the TV on and stream some stupid reality TV shows. Well, we got some time, might as well keep up with the Kardashians. The distraction hardly works and I find myself instinctively glancing over my phone every couple of minutes, waiting for any kind of update on Kurosawa's online status. It's not going to change that fast, okay? The evening passes slowly. Oh boy, I wonder what's gonna happen. <laughs> this can go so great. June 13th, Saturday morning. Gosh, that's pretty close to current date. We're just about to head into June here. Sunlight streams through the open curtains and I startle. Did I fall asleep on the couch? I wipe my mouth with my sleeve, cleaning off a trickle of jewel from my chin. My fink my or my phone is still on one hand. I quickly check it. I tap the fingerprint smeared screen, but it's not responding. The battery died. I must have fallen asleep and left the screen on all night. I race towards my charger and plug it in, anxiously waiting for just enough energy to turn the phone screen back on. I think we can all relate to doing that. We're just like, frick, come on, thing. Come on, phone. I need to use you. After what seems like an eternity, the phone comes to life. I catch a glimpse of the clock as I swipe the lock screen away. 6.34 a.m. Gosh, you wake up earlier than me, that's for sure. I open up noise as quick as I can and flick to Kurosawa's profile. Huh? Damn it! She blocked me! Yep. Freaking screwed. Frantically navigate to the group chat only to find that I've been kicked out. Damn it! Damn it! What can I do now? I've got no way of knowing whether Kurosawa is still alive. I set my phone down in frustration and it vibrates in retaliation. I blink a couple times. Who would be texting me at this hour? Might be Kurosawa again, trying to rub my face in her victory. Well, if that was the case, at least I know now that she's still alive. I accidentally pick up the phone again and open the message. There's no text, just a photo attachment. <laughs> oh. Hmm. Interesting. So you tried to, um... You tried to get someone else killed, and, uh... You got a photo of yourself dying sent to you wonder what that could mean oh and look at the time 7 28 a.m on the 13th it is 6 34 right now that's coming up what the hell is this? oh boy i i think we're pretty screwed nearly dropped my phone in terror a photo of the dead body twisted crumpled like it was falling from a great height a splatter of blood is flecked across the grass 
hard to make out the details of the person. Dirty blonde hair, familiar clothes, smudged makeup. This, this dead body, is it supposed to be me? There can be no mistaking it without a doubt. This is a picture of my own corpse. I shriek again, unable to process what I'm seeing. I'm so entranced by the battered corpse that it takes me a minute to notice the timestamp in the corner of the photo. I think that's cool. At least they include a timestamp, so you know. You can have, like, some hope that maybe, oh, I can do this or this to get out of it, and you'll still end up dying. It's today's date, but something is off. Time says 7.28 a.m. That's about an hour from now. I shiver involuntarily and feel the sickening sensation of bile rising in my throat. Is this a prediction of my death? Am I going to die within the hour? And then the truth hits me harder than my face hit the ground in this grisly photo. When you request a death on Corpse Girl's website, your victim receives a photo of their own corpse before they die. Before they die. I can't look at it anymore. I throw my phone to the side and curl up on the floor. Did Corpse Girl send this to me, and how? How did somebody get a photo of my corpse? A photo that is seemingly from the future. It's impossible. It has to be a hoax. Some trick, some psycho tormenting me. That's all it is. Someone is messing with me. Probably Kurosawa. I get up off the floor and stumble around. I'm kind of lightheaded and unbalanced. My stomach feels queasy, ready to launch its contents through my throat any second. Yeah, that does not sound good. I don't want to see a doctor about that. Finally, reach around my f for my phone and finally grasp it with near frozen fingers. The phone number that sent the photo, it's an unknown number, but the digits don't match the number that Kurosawa texted me from yesterday. So it's unlikely this came from her. Bizarrely, the phone number is kind of weird. There are more digits than it should be possible. I try to count them and stumble a few times in confusion. I should conclude that the number has 18 digits. Way too many. In addition, the phone number seems to repeat digits a lot. Huh. Yeah. Interesting. Those are um, some interesting digits to repeat. Seems too strange to be real. Is it possible to fake a phone number? Something interesting catches my attention. Even though the caller ID doesn't recognize the number, it has data on the origin of the number. Tokyo, Japan, my very own city. Perhaps the sender of the photo can mask their number, but can't hide their location. It gives me an idea. I decide to get to the bottom of the situation, despite my head throbbing and my stomach pleading to be emptied. I punch the phone number into a search engine along with the keyword Tokyo. One result. Link points to a popular discussion board, Noise Channel. It's an anonymous board where users can talk about almost anything. I wonder if Noise is, is supposed to be... Because it has, like, its own channels. Is it supposed to be, like, 4chan or something? But it's, like, a messaging app. Weird. And no big surprise, it's owned and operated by the very same company behind the Noise app I use on my phone. Okay, so it's a different discussion board. Interesting. But it's owned by the same company. Have to link and get taken to a discussion topic from less than a week ago. I quickly read through it. Strange photo from unknown number. Hey, so today I got a strange gore photo from a number I don't have in my contacts. Not sure what the deal is. It was gross, though. Wonder if any hackers can trace the number or something. Seems like a Tokyo area. I'm in Osaka. Okay, thanks in advance. The topic has only one reply. You got this too? Was the gore photo a picture of yourself? I'm worried. Received a similar pic from the same number. Thinking about contacting the police. Not sure if I'm overreacting. You know, you probably should, because then when you die, at least they'll know something's going on. And that's it. The end of the discussion. Neither post or followed up on the conversation. I wonder why. Damn it. That's all. That didn't give me anything to go on, except now that I know that at least two other people have received bloody photos of themselves. I wonder if those photos were as extreme as the one I received. What happened to those two posters? What did, why didn't they continue the discussion? I think you know the answer to that, Emmy. I don't need to tell you. I feel myself beginning to sweat. My body is going from cold to hot and back again several times a minute. It feels like I have a fever, but I know it's just stress tearing me up. I check the time. 6.59 a.m. About half an hour until the time printed on the photo. I take a deep breath when the doorbell buzzes. I freeze in place unsure whether I should answer the door. In the sketchy apartment building, it's a risk to answer the door on any given day before even taking into consideration that some psycho just texted me a photo of my own corpse. I tiptoe towards the door and stiff legs and gaze for the peephole. There's no one there. I breathe a sigh of relief. Maybe I'm just on edge and the doorbell echoed from someone else's apartment. Yeah, you can tell yourself that. But, uh... You know it was your door. Besides, I didn't know of anyone who would visit me unannounced, especially this early in the morning. I slumped to the floor, my back sliding down the door as I come to the rest of the carpet. My legs splayed out haphazardly in front of me. I've had enough fear for one day. I just have to believe this whole thing is a hoax. It's probably karma for trying to get revenge on Kurosawa. Yeah, that's it. Karma. 
The doorbell rings again. I scream in shock. My head slamming back against the door I was resting against. I jump to my feet and ignore the peephole, this time simply swinging the door wide open. A gust of chilly morning air sweeps into my apartment. I shut my eyes tightly against the sudden cold. My messy hair tangles in the wind and obscures my vision when I open my eyes. Quickly, I sweep the hair out of my face and look around. There's no one here except... Oh, hey, a body bag. Yeah, nothing strange about that. Yep, you know, our apartment's a little sketchy anyway, so this probably happens all the time. Probably killed a guy over some drug deal and uh, just left the body in front of here. A metal trolley is blocking the walkway in front of my door. A stark white bag about the size of a human body rests atop the trolley. My heart begins to race as I immediately recognize what this is. On TV, they always show these trolleys used in morgues to cart dead bodies around. <laughs> Y'all remember the home screen? There was a there was an open what would you call those where you put the bodies in? Okay, well there's an open one. The rest were closed in use and there was one open. Hmm. Interesting. Wonder what could be happening here. The vomit that's been trying to escape my body all morning finally finds its way to my mouth. I retch and heave in the doorway until nothing is left inside my belly except the stinging stomach acid that threatens to burn through the splashing container. The stench wafting through the trolley is overwhelming. Pinching my nostrils closed is little more than trapped a horrific odor inside my skull, and I gag and splutter involuntarily. My hand reaches forward as though controlled by some other, something, some being other than myself. I can't pull it back, and I can't prevent my fingers from grasping the zipper tag attached to the front of the body bag. I unzip the bag. Oh, hey, it's me! Cool. That's some pretty good makeup and effects. How did they get it to look so realistic? And there I am, a wretched corpse exposed to the day's first rays of sunlight. I stand there in the door as I lay atop the trolley, simultaneously alive and dead, but more dead than alive in both bodies. So I had this question when I first played. Um, is this going to be like a... Is this like a fake body? Like, obviously there can't be two of me. Or is this going to be like some like supernatural type thing? I have no idea. Uh, I was That's why I got very intrigued by this game in the orig originally in the first place. The bruising on my face is horrific, and I reach a stiff finger to my own lips, my living lips, tracing the outline of the bruise I see before me. There's no pain where the bruise should be, and I breathe a sigh of relief. Why would there be any pain if I'm already dead? To feel pain would be absurd, and then I would really have to start worrying. I wonder how I died. Did I fall from a great height? Did somebody hit me with a car? Did I collapse from some eternal reason? Perhaps from organ failure or un undiagnosed un sickness? Maybe I didn't die. The corpse in front of me is alive, living and breathing just as I would, standing in front of myself. Maybe this is all a prank I pulled on myself, dying just as a joke, but never really dying. Always living until the point I actually die and it's no longer a prank. My head is splitting, I can't think straight. All the words in my mind are jumbled and the meaning behind spoken, unspoken words disappearing behind foggy clouds inside my shattered skull. To clear my head, I step around my corpse and stand by the walkways railing. I'm on the fourth floor of the apartment building. Hmm... There are two floors above me, so I could go higher if I wish, but I'm pretty sure a leap from here would be enough to render my living body identical to the corpse of the trolley. At this point in time, there exists two versions of Emmy Katsuno. One is living, it is me, and the other is dead, but it is also me. I can now choose to be alive or dead, or be dead and dead, but I cannot choose to be alive and alive. So even if I choose to be alive and dead, I'm still only half alive, but choosing dead and dead is nice and clean, absolutely. Or absolute, an indisputable solid state of existence. Um, okay. <laughs> this reads like some really cryptic, um, some, some cryptic thought processes here. Not sure how I feel about that. I grip the cool steel hand, hand rail and lean over the walkway. My hair flip, whipping against my face thanks to the endless wind. Four stories below me is a small courtyard paved with concrete decorated with the occasional shrub or flower bed. I miss the concrete by about two feet. Dirt sprays up in my nose as my nose is crushed under my own body weight. I think about that photo Kurosawa sent me with her smug smile and her hands full of stolen money. My teeth grind it into my tongue and sever it, but it doesn't manage to escape my closed mouth. My mind wanders and set on Corpse Girl's website. What was that all about anyways? Just as far as I know, nothing happened when I submitted Kurosawa's details. Maybe Kurosawa found the website as well and submitted my details first. I guess Corpse Girl got me. Well played, Kurosawa. I think I could taste blood in my mouth, but it might just be a memory from some other point in my lifetime. A blinking light from a nearby parked car kind of irritates me, but then my vision turns to blue or black, and my only concern is how I'll truly never know what.
yeah, that that's that was the demo. And I was like, what the frick is going on? <laughs> that was the demo. And she just jumps off and kills herself. And you're like, what the frick happened? That was a freaking prologue. Act one, Noriko Kurosawa. I wonder if it's going to be from her perspective then. Three weeks earlier. This was May 25th. Anyways, guys, I, I think I'm going to end it here. I think having gotten through the prologue, that's a good introduction to the game. You probably know by now whether you like it or not. Uh, if you did like it, I would absolutely recommend buying it for yourself and playing through. Or I'll be playing it and you can watch me play it. Uh, whichever you prefer, you can do both. I, I have a lot of people who watch my videos who seem to do both, which I'm okay with. I like uh, having the, the company. I like having people to answer my questions who, like, obviously understand the game better than me but uh yes this is a little bit longer i think than the original demo was i think i got it through it in like 30 minutes but that's also it's also voice acted now and stuff so but it's very similar uh we shall see how the rest of the game goes i don't know anything beyond this point this is totally new from here on out but uh i'm excited to find out more about uh this girl right here i think it's gonna be interesting Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. That was Corpse Factory. I will be playing more pretty soon. So uh, I'm looking forward to it, and I'll see you guys then. Have a good one.